Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I wanted to do an update today on my home network because I finally did something that I've been meaning to do for a number of years now, which is setting up a separate network for my IoT devices. Things like my light bulbs and smart switches and all these other doodads that connect to your Wi-Fi, but sometimes don't get updated all that frequently and might have vulnerabilities. Oftentimes these devices are a gateway into your network and if somebody is out to get you, they might be able to get in through a light bulb and then burrow their way into the rest of your network. And what I was able to do uh, was set up something called a VLAN to isolate those devices away from everything else. And I'm doing all of this through the use of some Unify products, which are manufactured by a company called Ubiquity Networks. A number of years ago, I bought a bunch of their AC light wireless access points to extend Wi-Fi throughout my home. And what's nice about these Unify products is that they are typically used in the enterprise, but they're relatively easy to configure and they're relatively affordable for an enterprise class product. And you get a lot of control over how your network works as a result. So if you've ever been frustrated with some of your consumer networking gear, uh, these things will give you a lot more that you can do and configure. And it might be a little overwhelming for many folks, but I think those of you watching uh, might appreciate what you can do with these things. And one of the cool things about these Unify access points is that they support VLANs. And that allows me to have my computer here connecting to my main network through that uh, access point I've got in the ceiling over there. But my smart plug that drives my studio lights can also connect to that access point, but it's connecting to a different SSID, my IoT network, that is on its own VLAN. And what's great about this is that that smart plug is isolated from this computer, yet both the smart plug and the computer can get out to the internet and do all the things that they need to do online. And that is exactly what I wanted to do. I don't need two pieces of hardware to do it. It's all happening in one device. And I couldn't get this working until I got a new router that supported uh, VLANs. And I got one through Ubiquity called the Dream Machine. Uh, this is a device that incorporates a bunch of Unify products in one device. So it's a router, uh, it's a controller, which allows you to manage the entire uh, Unify uh, family of products on your network. Uh, it also has a smart switch built into it, and it has a wireless access point of its own built in as well. And when I got that going and attached up my Unify access points to it, I've got a single point of configuration, I've got these VLANs set up, and it's working great. And what I wanted to do today was set up a new guest network that's going to isolate itself from those other two networks as well and just kind of step you through that configuration process to show you how it works. Uh, there are so many features on this that I could start a whole YouTube channel about it. So we're going to focus on this one task today and I'll show you a few other things along the way that I think are pretty useful and cool. But I'm sure we'll come back to this and I'm sure you'll have questions about things that I didn't cover uh, in this video. So ask away down in the comments section and we'll try to get uh, some of those things covered in future videos. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the Dream Machine router uh, came in free of charge from Ubiquity, uh, but I did buy the access points with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. They are not paying for this review, nor are they reviewing or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how all of this works. So what you're looking at right now is the Unify controller running on my Dream Machine. Uh, in the past, you had to run this on a separate piece of hardware. Uh, they have controller devices that you could purchase, but you can also just run the controller software on a PC. Uh, but now it's integrated into the Dream Machine router, which was really helpful. Uh, this gives you a lot of great analytics as to the health of your network, both the uh, WAN side and the LAN side. You can see what I have configured here. Uh, we've got one switch, which is the switch that's built into the Dream Machine. I've got four wireless access points, the one that's built into the Dream Machine along with my AC lights that are all over the house. Uh, it tells me how many wireless clients are connected. I can also see how many wired uh, connections there are. I can also dive into the device section here and see what's going on with individual access points. So for example, I can click on basement here and get an idea as to how that specific device is doing. And I can also see uh, what devices are connected to that access point and what networks they're on. So this thing right here is the smart plug that's on the IoT network. And you'll notice that it has a different IP address uh, versus my other devices here that are on the main network, which is really nice to have there. 
Uh, you get some really cool statistics here to see how uh, the access point is performing. And if you were in a heavier trafficked environment, you could make sure that you have a powerful enough device to meet your traffic needs. Uh, they even have some things like a site survey that you can run to see uh, what kind of interference might be out there that might be hurting your Wi-Fi performance as well. And it logs all this data. It just goes on forever. And like I said, you could spend a lot of time with this. Uh, but let's dive into the network settings now and see how I have that IoT network configured. So I'm going to go down to the lower left-hand corner here and click on settings. And you'll see the uh, screen will change color here. And what I've got it on right now is the Wi-Fi section and the Wi-Fi networks. Now you can see here right now I've got my main network and I have the IoT network. And what I want to do now is create a third network for guests, which again is going to be separate and isolated from the other two. So I'm going to go over here and click on Create New Wi-Fi Network. I'm going to create an advanced Wi-Fi network just because I have some settings that I want to adjust on here. And I'm going to call this Guests. Keep it real simple. And I want my guests to know that they can find this pretty quickly and easily. Uh, we're going to enable the network. Uh, we're going to go to the security protocol and use WPA Personal for what I'm doing here. I'm going to set my guest network password. Uh, I could go further and do a bunch of policies to restrict the kinds of things that my guests can do, but I generally trust them, so we're just going to leave that alone. We're going for the simplified thing with this one. Uh, the next thing that I want to do here is select a VLAN uh, because we want to isolate this and we have to give it a VLAN ID. Uh, now my IoT network is set to a VLAN ID of, two, of 100, so I want to make this one 200 uh, just to have it uh, make sense to me personally here. Uh, so we're going to set that up and then I'm going to click Done. Uh, but I still have to do one other thing, which is create the actual network that this wireless network will be associated with. So let's go in and set that up now. Now, before we go too much further, I did want to show you that that guests network is now showing up on my list of wireless networks in the house here. But if I were to connect to it, uh, nothing would happen because we don't have a network configured uh, for that guest network to connect to. So we're going to go over to networks and we're going to click on local networks. And you can see already I've got two networks that are configured. One is the LAN, which is my main network. Uh, the second one is the IoT network. And you can see that these have different subnets. I've got dot two for the LAN and dot four uh, for the IoT network. And what I'm going to do down here is create a new local network for our isolated guest network. And I'm going to go to advanced uh, just so you can see all the options you have here. I'm going to call this guests. Uh, and I'm going to leave the network purpose as corporate because there might be things that uh, I may want to allow to go from this network to my main network, maybe a Chromecast or something like that down the road, and I want to have that option. Uh, the corporate network gives you the most amount of flexibility for how you might have things configured. Uh, but they do have a provision here for guest networks. Uh, but again, I want to have a little more flexibility, so I'm going to leave it on corporate. But I am going to have to uh, configure things very carefully here to make it work uh, like a true guest network. Uh, now, the first thing you'll see here on the list is the VLAN ID. And what we're going to do is type in 200. Uh, that's what we configured before. Uh, we're going to have this be a small LAN. And I'm going to give it the uh, subnet of uh, .6 here, just so that I can keep track of where everybody's going to be. Uh, we're also going to set the DHCP range here for that .6 network. And what will happen here is that when a device connects to that guest's network, it's going to be assigned through the DHCP server an address in this range. Uh, everything else here, though, I'm going to leave as the default. And again, there are a lot of things that you can configure here, as you can see, uh, that we're not going to go into in this video. We're just setting up a real quick and dirty isolated network. Uh, but there are channels that are dedicated to this hardware that can give you a lot of depth on what all of these different things do and why you might want to enable some of those things. I'm going to click Done here, and now we have successfully created that guest network. Uh, so the next thing now is to connect to it, because I want to show you a couple of things, and uh, that will lead us into the next setting that we have to make so that things can really get isolated here. So let's have a look at what happens when we connect to the guest network. All right, so this laptop is currently connected to my main network and has the address of 192.168.2.34. 
But what I'm going to do now is have it connect to the guests network. Now, the first time you connect, of course, it's going to ask you for the password for the Wi-Fi. But of course, Windows, Mac, and many other platforms remember that password after you type it in for the first time. And as you can see here now, we're on that dot six network. So we are now running on the guests network. And if I go out to Google here and just do a quick uh, Google search, you can see the internet is working, which is great. But we have a problem, Houston, and that is that I can still access things on the main network. So for example, if I uh, ping my network attached storage device that I've got at this address on the dot two network, I'm able to reach it. And we don't want that to happen because we're trying to isolate these networks from each other. Uh, so what we're gonna need to do here to stop this uh, is to set up some firewall rules in the router to prevent anything from crossing over from one network to the other. So let's go back now to the controller and I'll show you how to do that. So now we're back on the controller screen here. We're going to go over to the left and look for internet security. Uh, and then we're going to select firewall uh, from the options there. Now, most of this stuff is going to be set up for you automatically uh, by Unify, but uh, we've got one here that I set up before for the IoT devices, and this is basically dropping any traffic coming from the IoT network to the LAN. It will just drop all of it. So nothing from IoT can go to the LAN, but IoT is allowed to go to the WAN, which is the internet connection. And what we're going to do now is isolate the guest network in the same way. And we're also going to have to isolate IoT and guests from each other. So this is going to get a little bit more complicated for me because now I've gone from two networks to three. Uh, but let's dive in now and configure those rules. All right, we are back now on the controller. And what I'm going to do just to shorten this list up here is click on the LAN filter to give us a little less to look at. Uh, what I'm going to do now is click on create new rule and we're going to go over here to the side panel that just popped up and the type is going to be called LAN in. In other words, anything that's coming into our main network over the local area network from guests in this instance. We're going to say block all guest access for the description. Uh, we're going to make sure this is enabled. We're going to have this uh, rule apply before the predefined rules so that it overrides the default settings that allow for these, uh, these two networks to communicate. And what we're going to do here under action is change this to drop. Uh, we're going to leave this as it is. And then the source, we're going to change uh, over on source type to network. And the network we're going to select is guests. And this way we can specifically say that anything coming from the guest network will be dropped by the LAN. Uh, destination here needs to be set. Uh, so we're going to go again to network and the network will set as LAN. And that is pretty much it here. So we're gonna click on apply and you're gonna see here now that that got added to the list. Uh, now what we're gonna do is go uh, back over to the screen we were at before, and I'm going to reconnect to the guest network now. And we should see some different behavior than we did a few minutes ago. So let's go over here and select guests. Uh, that will get us uh, over to the guest network, and we should get that guest IP, that dot six address. So let's give that a second to get going there. So there you go, dot six dot thirty four. And hopefully the internet still works. So let's click on uh, this link on the nasa.gov homepage, and sure enough, that came in over the internet. Uh, but now we're going to go back to my terminal window here, and I'm going to ping uh, the same computer we pinged on the LAN network a minute ago, and it shouldn't work. So let's see what happens. And there you go. It's timing out because the firewall is not allowing us to connect. I lost a, a connection to a, a NAS drive I was connected to as well. So we are now isolated uh, from that uh, LAN address that we were able to access before. So now we've got my guests unable to send anything to the main LAN network. That's great. But remember, we've got another network on this network. We've got my IoT network. And if we go to uh, this dot four address of a light bulb that sits on that IoT network, uh, we can ping it. So in other words, the uh, guest network is still able to communicate with IoT and we need to shut down that uh, connection as well. So what we're going to do is go back to our 
uh, control panel here, we're going to create another rule. Uh, this rule is actually going to be very similar to the one we just created, but we're now going to prevent guest traffic from going to the IoT network. So we're going to say block guest traffic oops, to IoT. Uh, we're going to make sure that's enabled. Uh, the action here is going to be drop. Uh, we're going to go to source and we're going to have the source network be guests. And then we're going to set the destination uh, to be the IoT network here. And we'll do that. And I think that's all we got to do. So we're going to click apply here. That will add it to our list of firewall rules. I probably want to clean up that description to get rid of the typos. And if I go back here and go to ping again, uh, you can see now that we're blocked from communicating there. Uh, but we can go and still access the internet here uh, because we haven't restricted WAN access. And now those two networks are separated from each other. Now what's really neat about this setup is that my Unify access points are not running through managed switches. Uh, so these VLAN tags from the IoT and guest traffic are being passed through unmanaged switches and then when that traffic arrives at the router it knows what to do with it. I don't know how it works but it's working uh, and I'm really pleased with just how simple this was to get set up. In fact it almost feels too easy to me and that's part of why I'm putting this video out there to see if I'm missing something but I have not been able to get traffic to pierce any of these walls here. It's been working great. I've now got three isolated networks that I can use for different purposes. I could add more networks if I wanted to. I could even set up things where maybe the guests can get access to a Chromecast or something. So I've got more things that I can explore here as well if I want to add more complex firewall rules. But in this video, I just wanted to show you the basics to get uh, things operating. Uh, now, one thing I'm probably going to have to do soon, though, is actually replace that a dream machine in the closet. And the reason is, is that I am told that I can now get gigabit pro uh, internet from Comcast, which is a two gigabit fiber optic symmetrical connection. Uh, that dream machine in the closet there pretty much maxes out at 850 megabits per second uh, for one of these fiber connections. So if you're going to a gig or more, uh, you may want to go up to the Pro Dream machine that uh, is a little bit more robust. It can support much faster WAN connections and still maintain all of the deep packet inspection and some of the other things that it can do. Uh, and it has a hard drive slot built into it so you can use it as a server for your security cameras that uh, Unify also manufactures. So that's a bit of a bump up. We're probably going to go to that one again in a few weeks when I learn more about my new internet connection, which I'm so excited for. Uh, but all of the configuration will be the same. In fact, I think I can copy the configuration from the existing Dream Machine to the new one. Uh, the only thing I'm losing on the Pro versus this one is built-in Wi-Fi, but I don't need that because I already have the Wi-Fi access points all over the house. So we'll be coming back to this as my uh, connection here improves, and I'm looking forward to getting that and sharing that experience with you. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.